being the scientist she is, she went looking for that in the Fraser sockeye, and she found them. And uh, DFO just went ballistic when she came up with this, and they said, oh, no, that's, that's from hitting the fish over the head with a, with a, with a stick. <laughs> but um, it wasn't. They have blood vessels into the brain, and Miller dropped this line of research. But um, she did find the pictures, and, uh, you know, Nissa and I have gone looking for them, but now that those should be <coughs> off their migration route, maybe the sound of leukemia will be suppressed. But when I see headlines like that, um, yeah, you're going to make these fish run through a disease that kills 100% of them. Yeah, they're going to uh, definitely be missing here. And yet, I can't get those sport fishermen to take this issue seriously. So that's salmon leukemia. Um, ISA virus has a very interesting history. It's an influenza, it's a flu, and it was discovered in Norway in 1984. And it bounced around the North Atlantic, and the fish farmers said, oh, it's the wild fish spreading it, it's the wild fish spreading it, and then boom, it showed up in Chile. It was not the wild fish. And um, the scientists who discovered that got you know, went through her tremendous harassment, lost a year of his life just fighting for his career. My lawyer, Greg McDade, characterized DFO's handling of this virus, denial and suppression. It is a reportable disease. But DFO said on the stand, there has been no indication of ISA or ISA virus on this coast. Dr. Kent man who wrote the uh, technical report for Cohen about disease said, thank you for clarifying that ISA has not been seen in D.C. Dr. Gary Marty, he's the man in the vet for the province who was opening up thousands of farm salmon every year. He said he has a great deal of confidence that we don't have ISA virus in British Columbia. Claire Backman, who works for Marine Harvest, the biggest fish farm company in the world, the company that brought it to uh, Chile, he says, um, that uh, they have been successful in preventing any exotic disease, particularly this one. I really, that, that line, you uh, probably will regret that. Um, Peter McKenzie from CERMAS, over 5,000 tasks for ISAB. He, he has an extremely high level of confidence that our industry is free from this virus. But there's no reason we wouldn't have it. It was never listed on the egg import forms. Uh, it's reportable internationally, but not to Canadian authorities until a year ago. Uh, in 2004, uh, a hatchery in Iceland that didn't meet our regulations, um, the fish farm industry was allowed to import eggs from there eventually because they were worried about trade sanctions. The vet who's opening up the fish says a thousand times, oh, that looks like ISA virus but nobody listens to him, and everybody says, nope, it's not here, it's not here, it's not here. So, while the Cohen Fire was going on, I was bound to secrecy. This is really tough for me. <laughs> um, and a friend of mine, studying the River's Inlet sockeye, called me in the spring, he goes, look out, there are, there's virtually no River's Inlet sockeye coming out of the river. He had been studying it for five years, because that, run of fish, as you can see, has been in severe decline. And I said, you know, we advise you, I would check for ISA virus. And, he, you know, neither one of us really thought that we were going to find it, because everybody saying it's not here, it's not here. And um, he called me up in uh, October of uh, last year, and he said, you better sit down, Alex. Uh, two of the fish tested positive for European ISA. And, uh, yeah, I just burst into tears because this virus ripped through Chile and caused $2 billion worth of damage. Every country that gets it is trying to get rid of it. Uh, and here it was in two rivers inlet smolts. They're not even near the farms. And smolts, so that means their parents had it or somebody else who came into the lake had it and passed it to them. And... Uh, so we held a press conference right away, which is a very unusual thing. So this is Dr. Rick Rutledge, very brave man, Simon Fraser University. 
Uh, he said, Alex, we've got to get this out so the scientific community can look at this. And he didn't want the data hidden. Um, and all hell broke loose. The Minister of Agriculture called us reckless. And then he said um, that he had Premier Clark personally tell China that, that our seafood was still safe. I thought that was an interesting reaction. Um, the Minister of Fisheries federally said that we had needlessly put Canada's reputation at risk because we reported ISA and two little, little smolts. Huge reaction. Anissa and I went straight to the Fraser River. And we started to wonder how widespread this was. And we picked up this 30-pound uh, white spring salmon from the Harrison. She had it. This sockeye had it. And this bobo had it. And by then, it was so secretive, I wasn't even allowed to, to get my own disease reports from the lab. It came through a lawyer. We picked up 11 fish. Three of them had it. And all these people have been testifying, it's not here, it's not here, it's not here. And none of these fish have spawned. So the Cohen Inquiry reopened, and here's Dr. Miller. This is Dr. Fred Kabenge. He is extremely brave. I'm working with him very closely right now. And this is the woman for DFO who keeps saying she can't find it. She's the only one DFO is listening to. <coughs> And we learned a lot. We learned 80 to 90 percent Atlantic salmon have it. 30 million Atlantic salmon eggs have come into BC since 1986. And so my feeling is if you want to believe that ISA is not here, you might as well believe in the tooth fairy. We're getting it in our lab tests. 80 to 90 percent Atlantic salmon have it. Nobody was checking for it at the border. We also found out when the Cohen Inquiry reopened, the DFO already knew this. They had been hiding these results since 2004. Justice Cohen said he wanted all the documents that had to do with the demise of the Fraser Sockeye. The most endangered Fraser Sockeye run is the Cultus Lake. They found it in 100% of them. These guys are st still in operation. Nothing happened to them. They're still in their position. And this is the actual piece of, you know, this is actually from the paper. 64 out of 64 had it. So did 50% of the Eastern Vancouver Island Chinook salmon. They never told anybody. They said they didn't really actually believe their own tests. 100% of the cultist lake sockeye died of pre-spawn mortality three years running. A cultist lake is an acute concern since 1996. 85% uh, of them died before spawning in 2006. And DFO never told Cohen about the ISA they found. It was Dr. Kabenge who, who couldn't take it anymore and made sure Cohen saw that document because his wife was the one who was originally doing the test. So when Cohen reopened, it was fascinating because by then, the lawyers really kind of were getting the drift of this, particularly the lawyers for the Cohen uh, Commission themselves. And there was a lot of shocking revelations, but this one was really useful to me. This is Dr. Kim Klotz from the CFIA, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. And she said, so, let's say we do find ISA in BC and all of a sudden markets are closed. Whoa, okay. That's why nobody wants ISA to be here, because markets would be closed. Um, our role is then to renegotiate or negotiate market access. We'll let them know what we can do and whether we can meet that market access. If we can't meet it, then there will basically be no trade. So when Rick says protection of wild salmon with DFO is about trade, it's actually, they're protecting trade. Salmon really aren't even in the equation. They're protecting trade. And, and if there's one message I'm trying to get around to people, if you think you guys obviously know, but if anyone thinks DFO is protecting wild salmon, that is not the case. They're protecting trade. Trade's not an entirely bad thing to protect, but that's what they're doing.
saw the reports by DFO, uh, we saw the reports by Dr. Miller, she had also found it, but the industry kept saying, we don't have it, no, no, we can't have it, you can't look. And uh, but they're lying on ice, our fresh fish, <laughs> with gills in them, which is just the organ we needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first batch we bought, uh, 11, and boom, 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 that one had it, that one had it, that one had it, five had it. I only have four pictures, but five of them had it out of 11. And this better chum, female, uh, from the Better River. So the cultist lake spills into the Better River. DFO and the CFIA say all these tests are wrong. But ISA virus is here. And not only uh, did we find ISA, but while I was sending these samples to these labs, we also found um, two very virulent forms of ISA, one of which was responsible for the, the outbreak in Chile, uh, the HPR7B. And we also found Piscine Rio virus, which um, and this has pictures of uh, the hearts that come from these fish. They, they look like pudding. You cut into the heart of a fish, instead of it looking like a heart, it looks like pudding. And in Norway, they, um, they say that a fish with this virus can't go over river. Mm. So 90% of the Fraser stock are going missing after their counted admission. And we're wondering how many of them have pudding hearts. And we hope to start looking tomorrow in the fish. Uh, but I don't think it's you guys. Um, Cohen never heard this. You know, imagine a salmon with a heart of mush going through there, or trying to get away from the sky. Um, it's not going to work out very well. When, when we found this Piscine Rio virus, which causes heart and skeleton muscle inflammation, which is HSMI, when, it, when, when we started with ISA, when we released the ISA result, they all had their media notes. But when we did this one, they, they, we took them by surprise. So the BC salmon farmer said, oh, no, we're not seeing any indication of the virus with the impacts that she described. Several viruses happening to them all at once. 